Greetings, my faithful viewers. Rowdy Retro Viewer here again. Here to share my thoughts on the final Back to the Future film in this trilogy franchise. Back to the Future Part 3. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't need to get a little bit excited there. Yes, this is the third installment of the Back to the Future trilogy. And it does have a very satisfying conclusion. Well, other than the fact that there's a cartoon show, video game, comic book series, and a ride based on the film trilogy. But that's besides the point. Well, just to let you know, I watched the third film on DVD, not VHS. Just to be clear. Focus, camera! Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. Well, yep, it's Mary McFly and Doc Brown with Mary Berg's, I mean, Mary Steenbergen in this rousing conclusion to the popular series from executives, executive producer Steven Spielberg and director Robert Zemeckis. Stranded in 1955, Again, <laughs> after a freak burst of lightning, Marty must travel back to 1885, the days of the old wild, wild west, to rescue Doc Brown from, from a premature end. Surviving an Indian attack and unfriendly townsfolk, Marty finds Doc Brown the blacksmith, but with the dog under a spell of Charming Clara Clayton, meaning that Doc Brown had found the girl of his dreams, and who could blame him? It's up to Marty to get them out of the Wild West and back to the future. It's action, laughs, and romance in this grand finale to the blockbuster time travel series. Yes, that's right. And this time, not only that Doc and Marty has the Face young Biff Tannen of 1955, his future descendants from 2015, and old Biff from, well, 2015. This time they had to face Doc Brown, I mean, Biff Tannen's Western ancestor, Buford Mad Dog Tannen, a ruthless Western outlaw of the Old West. Now, for this one, it is, a, it is truly a satisfying conclusion to the Back to the Future trilogy. I mean, just like it said in the description of the VHS co cover, even though I did say I watched it on v DVD, it is still a great conclusion to the film trilogy. As usual with the last two films, Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox are perfect in the roles of Doc Brown and Morty McFly. And I like and and I like the new characters they introduced. Like Mary Steenburgen as Clara Clayton. <laughs> Funny enough, originally she didn't want to be involved in she I think she kind of re She wasn't quite sure she wanted to be a be in the third film. But her kids are huge fans of the first two films that they begged her to be in the film, the third film. Yes, that is true, and I should thank Minty Comedic Arts for pointing that out when he did a top 10 facts video about Back to the Fu Future 3. And another thing I like about this film is the setting. Now, instead of, <laughs> instead of the film crew trying to redesign uh, Hill Valley to make it look like the good old days of 1955 and 2015 and 1985. They actually had to start from scratch by making it look like it's in the old Wild West. <laughs> and man, they did a good job with that. Because it always feels like we just entered the good old days of the Wild Wild West. I'm guessing watching a lot of Western-related shows and movies, especially 
watching Hanna Barbera's Quit Drawing the Growl and Ricochet Rabbit must have paid off at the end or something. It's hard to say anything bad about this film. You know? Like I said, this is a great film and does seem like a great satisfaction. I mean, it does, it does have a great conclusion to the film trilogy. Because you never know what the future holds for us. And I kind of like the idea of having them explore the wild, wild west. Because in the first film, we, ex we get to see Marty McFly explore 1955 Hill Valley. And then in the second film... We get to experience him going through 2015 Hill Valley and then back to 1955 Hill Valley. But this time, having you explore the Wild West of Hill Valley is cool. And I gotta admit, Buford Mad Dog Talent Tannen is quite a menacing cowboy villain. I mean. <laughs> I mean, he did, he's even more missing than ni <coughs> the 1950. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. He's even more menacing than 1955 Biff or 2015 Biff or alternate 1985 Biff. You know, when, you know, like in the sequel, he changed history by becoming the most richest, powerful man in the world. Yeah, that. Now, I'm not sure what other movies and TV shows Mary Steenburgen was in. Wait, I think I remember that she was in Parenthood, starring Steve Martin, and... Yeah, I think that's about it. Those are the only films I know that features Mary Steenburgen. Back to the Future 3 and Parenthood. You guys can let me know down in the comments below... If she was in any other TV show and movie in her career. And I think she, Clara King, Clayton became like a reoccurring character in the, in, the, in the animated series. Which I'm not sure if that technically counts as Back to the Future Part 4. I'm guessing you guys are going to disagree with me and saying, and saying that Back to the Future, the animated series, might not count. Same with the video game or the comic book series. But hey, sometimes I like to think that. And I'm glad that I get to re get a chance to revisit all three Back to the Future films on DVD. Even though I do own, own the, the original trilogy on VHS. It's hard to think of anything, like I said, it's really hard to think of anything that's bad about this film because there's not, there's not a lot of bad things about it. The f all these films, like this one, is quite enjoyable. And it's cool to see Doc and Marty explore the Wild West, and I'm glad we get to learn a lot about Marty and Biff's ancestors in the Old West. <laughs> Which is kind of right when you think about it. Well, now I think Buford and Mad Dog Tanner was hinted at first in the, se in the second film, Back to the Future Part 2. Which, I, which I'm guessing that's like, on a, you might have noticed that Buford and Mad Dog Tanner's face might look, might look a little different compared to this film and the sequel. Probably because the... When Buford and Mad Dog Tanner was shown on a TV screen in the second film, you know, you know, in the alternate 1985 film, I think that was meant to be like test makeup to see what Buford and Mad Dog Tannen was going to look like. Cause I, like I said in my last video, both Back to the Future's parts two and three were filmed back to back. Just thought I'd bring that up and get. I just thought I'd bring that up again, in case you guys didn't know. And since the 
since the film franchise will be 20, I mean, 39 years old in a couple of months, I just figured that this would be in, I just figured this would be a great way to celebrate the film franchise a little early. You know? Since it has since it has been 39 years since we all fell in love with the original film trilogy. It is kind of cute to see Doc Brown have a bit of a romantic relationship relationship with Clara Clayton. Clayton. And I'm glad we get to see what would have happened if Doc Brown found found the girl of his dreams, you know? So anyways, this is a great film to watch along with the last two films. And I hope you guys enjoy them too. So to wrap things up, Back to the Future 3 is a great conclusion. And it might be a little bit goofy, but hey, sometimes we all enjoy a lot of goofy things in life, right? <laughs> well, anyways, thank you guys for watching. And like I said before... The future is what you make of it. <laughs> Just thought I'd bring that up again.